Welcome to another episode on our Red Sea Reefer 170. Today we're going to work through Red Sea's Reef Foundation Pro test kit. We're going to test for calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. And these levels are very important for any successful reef aquarium to, in order to help corals grow and keep your nuisance algae at bay. Now, we've already actually completed these tests. Our calcium level was 410 parts per million, which is a little bit low. I prefer to keep it about 420 to 440 parts per million. Our alkalinity was 7.3, again just a little bit low, I prefer to keep alkalinity between 8 and 9 dKH, and then our magnesium was high at 1530 parts per million, I prefer to keep magnesium between about 1300 and 1350 parts per million. So we're going to add some calcium and alkalinity buffer to the aquarium, we're not going to add any magnesium at this point, get those, get those levels to balance out in the, uh, within the desired ranges. Now. Let's uh, go ahead and I'll show you how we got these test results. We're going to fast forward here uh, and show you the actual process of testing the water for our tank. And we'll come back uh, next week. Hopefully we'll be ready to add some corals uh, into the aquarium finally. Thanks guys. All right, now we're going to test the calcium in our Red Sea Reefer 170. Each test kit has a card with directions on one side and a chart on the other side where you can compare your results. And I've already filled the test vial with five milliliters of water from our aquarium. The first step is to add five drops of reagent A. So I want to turn the dropper bottle upside down next to the vial and then add five even drops. One, two, three, four, five. We'll set that aside. Now we need to swirl that bottle for 10 seconds. And the next step is going to be to add one level scoop of powder, which is reagent B to the test vial. So we're going to use a spoon that they provide to get an even drop or even scoop of the powder there. Sometimes it helps to have a card to level it. You get a nice even scoop and then you want to swirl that for 20 seconds to make sure that all of that powdered reagent is dissolved in the test solution. And the last step is a titration reagent. We'll need to draw one milliliter of reagent C into the syringe. You want the stopper to be right at one mil. You'll have a little air gap at the top, but that's compensated for by reagent in the tip of the vial. Now Red Sea has provided this uh, holder for the syringe. You want to be careful not to press any of the reagent out. But there you have it in the holder. And now we need to add reagent into the test file. The test file actually will screw onto the bottom of this holder. And what we're looking for is a color change from pink to blue. And then we're going to take our reading based on how much reagent we have used. So I'm going to slowly add drop by drop and swirl, waiting for that color change. Now once you've tested the water a number of times and you know a basic idea of where your level should be, you can start by adding a little more reagent at first, maybe skipping down to 0.5 or 0.4, because for calcium level to be in the desired range, you're going to be using most of this one mil. So I'm going to go a little faster in the beginning and then slow it down as I get closer to where I know the level will be. So we'll just keep doing this, waiting for that to change to blue. Again, this test does go quicker once you've tested the water on a regular basis and you understand the range. But testing for calcium, Alkalinity and magnesium is a very important part of having a healthy, balanced reef aquarium. Proper levels help the corals to grow faster and be healthier. They also help to keep algae down. Water without high levels of calcium, water with a lower alkalinity or lower magnesium, algae tends to flourish much more than it would if you have the levels in the proper range. I prefer to keep the calcium level 
in our reef tanks here at Vivid Aquariums between about 420 and 440 parts per million. So we just keep doing this little by little. Still waiting for that color change. Just trying to add a drop or two drops at a time until we see the sample start to change. When we see it start to change, we're going to slow down and make sure we're just doing one drop at a time so that we can get an accurate test result. So here we are continuing. We're getting closer to the desired range here. We should start to see our color changing soon. Again, just adding drop by drop. I can start to see it getting more of a purple. So I sh we should see blue. That's very purple to me, not quite blue yet. I'm going to add one more drop. That, to me, is definitely blue. So I'm going to look at my reading on the vial. I'm at 18. I'm going to see one more drop if that changes any different. Not really. I'm going to go with 18 and then we'll compare on our chart on the other side and we can see 18 means we've used 82 so that our calcium level in our tank is 410 parts per million so we will need to add a little bit of Reef Foundation A which is a calcium supplement to raise that level up in the 420 to 440 part per million range but 410 is good enough that uh, we can definitely get some starter corals into this aquarium soon. All right, now we're going to do the alkalinity test for our Reefer 170. We'll start by drawing one mil of reagent into our syringe. Again, I'm bringing the stopper right to the one mil mark. The liquid will not come all the way to the top, but that's compensated for by liquid in the tip there. You do want to make sure that the tip of the syringe is on firmly in order to get an accurate reading. You can drop your syringe into this nice holder, push it down, make sure not to squeeze out any reagent when you do that, and then you can thread on your test vial. Now, I've already filled it with the 10 mils of sample water from our tank, and what we're going to do is slowly add reagent into the test vial until we get a color change from blue to red. And you'll notice on the other side of the card, it gives you a chart so you can compare your readings and find out your alkalinity of your aquarium. So I'm going to turn this so we can see better. I'm going to start by adding very slowly, one drop at a time, and swirling between drops. Now if we look at our directions on the card, again, we're waiting for a change. We have a blue tint to it now. We're waiting for that tint to change to red. When we get it to turn red, we're going to look at the stopper, take our reading, and compare it to the chart on the other side to determine our alkalinity. I prefer my alkalinity to be between about 8 and 9 dKH. So we'll see where we are in just a minute here. Now once you've run the test a number of times, just like with the calcium test, you can start to put in the reagent a little faster in the beginning once you know, have a basic idea of where your alkalinity is. And then once you get closer to where you think it will be, you want to slow down to drop by drop. But obviously it saves a little time if you can put in a little bit more reagent in the beginning. You're not sitting there as long going drop by drop. But since this test is our first alkalinity test, well actually second, but first using the alkalinity pro test, we're going to take our time so we get an accurate reading and then go too fast. Again, water testing can be a tedious process, but I much prefer this to scrubbing algae or seeing my corals not open fully or not growing well. So I must say that if you spend the time to test your water on a regular basis, understand the chemistry of your aquarium, you're going to have a lot more success in the hobby, a lot more fun. You're not going to waste money 
and have heartbreak seeing your corals and fish not thriving. In the end, regular water testing leads to a much more enjoyable reef aquarium hobby. Now once this tank is established, I've been testing on a regular basis, I can do this test much faster, again, because I'm not going drop by drop throughout the whole range. Now, alkalinity is important to keep stable. You don't want it to vary by more than one dKH within a 24-hour period. If you do have alkalinity swings, it can cause uh, corals to bleach or not open fully, especially for aquapores. Now, I see the tint starting to change. So I'm going to look now at the stopper. We're at 47. I'm going to see if it goes more red. Get like a bright red. Looks like it's still not changing. I'm going to go a little more. Still not changing to a bright red. So it looks like 47 is going to be my reading. There you see, it's definitely red. It started at 47. So you'll look at that's 53 mils used. So we have an alkalinity of about 7.3 in our tank right now, which is just a little bit low. Certainly safe for adding some inverts and corals to start out with. But we are going to use the Reef Foundation B buffer to help raise our alkalinity up into that 8 to 9 dKH range. All right, now we're going to go ahead and test the magnesium level of our reefer tank. I've already added two mils of sample water from our aquarium. The next step is to add uh, one drop of reagent A. And then we need to swirl for 15 seconds. And we need to do that five times. So we're going to swirl 15 seconds. We're going to do another drop. 15 seconds again, back and forth, five times. And finally, fifth drop. And swirl for another 15 seconds. Now, the next step will be to add five drops of reagent B, and then we'll have to swirl for 60 seconds. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, turn it upside down, move over, five even drops. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to swirl for 60 seconds. I must say that magnesium levels are very important for keeping algae growth down and helping to balance your calcium and alkalinity. There's definitely a re relationship between calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium in the reef aquarium. And so keeping these levels balanced is a, a big step towards success and growing your corals keeping your nuisance algae down, and uh, having a happy reef aquarium. Testing uh, can be a little bit tedious, but it's not as bad as scrubbing a bunch of algae out of the tank. And uh, in the end, it'll save you a lot of time with the hobby and get more enjoyment out of it by uh, keeping your water parameters in line. About another 15 seconds here, and we're going to move to the final step in which we do a titration we're going to add again one mil of reagent C slowly to the test vial and wait for a color change from pink to blue. So now let's go ahead and suck up the one mil of solution. Again, the liquid does not come all the way to one mil. The stopper stops at one mil. And then that extra liquid is compensated for by liquid in the tip of the syringe. We'll insert this in here. And screw our test file onto the bottom. This makes it easy to add drops slowly. In the beginning you can add a little bit faster, two to three drops at a time. Uh, I call it cheating, but as long as you don't see a color change to blue, you know you haven't over cheated and your test result will still be accurate. Now if it was to change to blue, that's when I get in trouble for cheating and I have to start the test over again. 
but here we're going to slowly add it, waiting for that color change from pink to blue. Usually you'll see it start gradually to change, and you want to keep adding the reagent until it becomes a solid blue color. I'm excited to finally be able to add some corals into this tank, hopefully in the next videos. We're going to definitely install our MP10 powerhead, get some flow going in the tank, and uh, show you about how to mount corals in the tank. We'll add some inverts, some cleanup crew, and uh, get ready for some fish hopefully soon too. You see that the color is slowly starting to change here, finally. I'm going to be very slow to add drops now. I see it's a purple, not quite blue. I'm going to really slow down. Now I see a nice solid blue color. Uh, we're at 22 on the test vial, so we can compare that to our chart. 22. So we're still pretty high. Um, we're at 1,560 parts per million of magnesium, so definitely don't need to add any magnesium supplement to the tank at this point, but uh, we'll just go ahead and keep dosing our calcium, alkaline, get them into the desired ranges. Magnesium should come down over time, and uh, hopefully we'll be ready to add some corals here shortly.